The iron ore price is now up 10% in a week, not because the Chinese economy has turned round, but because markets think it will. And as a result, the Aussie dollar has battled its way up from under 64 US cents to just under 65. On the share market, Qantas had a jumbo jet result, but it was well flagged, so the shares only went up 737. Judo Banks and Ramsey Health's results were not well flagged, so they were thrown to the mat and ended up in ER. The market closed higher overall because the banks had a good one. And global markets all rose ahead of tomorrow's central bank conference in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where it's felt the Federal Reserve might be nice, not nasty. Today's intergenerational report, like all of them, is a graphonanza, a chart NATO. So I was in a frenzy of choice. Here are my five favourites. Now, this one shows the federal budget balance in the first report in 2002 and then in 2015 when the coalition predicted surpluses forever. In 2021, in the midst of the pandemic, deficits forever. And today's one, surplus this year and then deficits forever. And that's not because tax receipts will decline, but because they won't keep up with outgoings. This one compares total tax revenue in Australia for all levels of government with the OECD average. Now, the difference between us and the average is about $100 billion. As for you and I, well, we'll be poorer. Gross national income per person over the next 40 years is forecast to be less than half what it was in the past 40 years. And finally, the number of times climate change and debt are mentioned in the six intergenerational reports. When the coalition is in power, they talk about debt. When it's Labor, they talk about climate change. But this time, it's off the charts. And that's finance.